Presets are awesome because they make your life easier, not only because they make your edits faster, but they help you keep your editing style consistent. How can you take that ease and convenience and make it available for everyone? Of course, I'm talking about selling your presets. Today, I'm gonna to talk about how you can do that to make passive income and to make your editing style available worldwide. How does it start? With Lightroom, Oh, almost dropped it. But I'm working on the iPad today just to show you a different workflow. Remember, Lightroom is a cloud-based application that's available on your phone, your computer, as well as the tablet. Remember that as we edit, we often do exactly what that image needs, but to make a preset, we need to make something that not only works for one image, but it works universally. So there's a couple key differences between how you edit a single photo, how you edit for a preset that are important for you to make presets that you can sell. Presets are amazing because they help you develop a consistent editing style and they save you time. They can also help you make more money. Well, you could take more photos, you could edit more photos, and you could sell those presets and make some passive income. Today I'm gonna to talk to you about how to do that. Today we're gonna to talk about the key differences between editing for a preset and editing for a single image. Essentially you have to understand that as we edit for a single image, we're trying to get that image perfect. When you make a preset, you're making a starting point for yourself or another photographer to start their edit, giving them a distinct look and feel to their image. How do you maintain your editing style without altering things that'll make it difficult for a photographer to make changes afterward? There's three main tenets. We don't want to alter our exposure, our white balance, or our sharpening. Let's take a look. So if we get down in, in Lightroom, we can see um, an edit that I really love here that I took for a client work from two years ago. Just like with all Lightroom Im images, if you press and hold, you'll see the before, you see the after. You can even see how these colors change um, into making it a little bit colder and really highlighting her yellow headscarf. What if I like this edit and I want to use it elsewhere? Well, I can hit tap in this top right corner. I can hit copy edit and you'll see that it's giving me the option to figure out what parts of my edit do I want to copy. Now this is important. Why? Let's just copy everything for this first time to see. Tap copy. Let's say, remember this image is like a relatively dark one. Let's take this image and let's place it on something that is a little bit brighter and see what happens. Let's place it on this image of my friend Noemi. I hit paste. And we're going to see a preset, the preset changed the edit kind of severely. We're going to see an image that before is reasonably kind of even edited that's into one that's really, really bright. And if we go back, we'll see that the initial edit I had was a little bit darker than that. So the reason why we don't change exposure is because we don't know what the settings were on the camera that the photographer used. Because the presets we make for ourselves, we know generally that we might like to stop down or stop up in a situation, but if someone buys your presets, the difference between the presets being amazing and them sucking is, will they give a distinct style without taking away from what the photographer's trying to do? So, since we don't know, not altering our white balance, not altering our exposure, not altering our sharpening are key. I'm gonna show you what happens when we make a preset that doesn't alter those things and see how it still gives a good base of color. Let's take this image of Venetia. Love this photo. You can see that actually, I don't think there's a ton of exposure change, it's just 0.14. Let's double click this and turn that exposure off. Let's even turn down this contrast. Instead, let's go down to our curves. Let's make our darks a little bit darker. Our brights a little bit brighter, making a little bit of natural contrast without being overpowering. Now let's go over to color. We'll see the color temperature, but we're not going to copy it. Go to effects. Like that with clarity, see sharpening. Now, this time what we're gonna do, these top three buttons, we're gonna hit copy, and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna turn off exposure and contrast, like you saw that I turned off already. Turn off sharpening and detail, and then I can paste the edit that I want. But this time we're gonna actually make it a preset. So, we're gonna hit presets, we're gonna hit the top right buttons again, and now we have the option to hit create preset. Well, just like we practiced with the copy, all we have to do now is go over to light, Turn off exposure, turn off contrast too for that matter. Go down and turn off sharpening and detail and lastly go to color and turn off our white balance. It's important to turn off the white balance because we don't know how the image is gonna be taken. Is it taken indoors, outdoors, and in mixed light? Um, you just allow the person to use the white balance as they see fit. Now we're just gonna name this. 
we're going to put in user presets. We're going to name this test preset two. Then we're going to hit final, and now test preset two is added. So we'll hit done. Let's go to a different photo and see what happens. We'll take this photo of Ty Will, for example, also dark skinned person, um, a little bit brighter of an image. We're going to go to preset. We're going to go down to user presets. Go to test with a T. My alphabet skills are sometimes weak, so don't judge me if I lose it. And let's hit test preset two, and we'll see. If you notice that we're getting a difference in edit, but not one that's so aggressive that it's taking away from what I wanted to do in the first place. I also have test preset one here, and you can kind of see this kind of change in warmth. But once again, the overall exposure of the image is the same. The white balance is similar. All we're doing is giving it a distinct color look. And the sharpening isn't super different, which you'd be able to see in his hair and his eyes. We're gonna do one more example, and then you'll be on your way to making great presets, and then we're gonna talk about how to export them. So, let's end with this photo of Muhammad in the street. Let's take, go back to presets, let's go down to test preset one, and see what it looks like if we look at the before this photo. We'll put test preset one out on, and see, it looks like classic New York. It looks warm, it looks red. Let's go to test preset two. It looks a little bit greener, but if you notice, his skin doesn't actually change all that much. And while we're giving color and tone to the background, we're not detracting from the point of the image. That's what our goal is. So now, after we hit done, we can obviously rename our presets, we can update them, which I'd recommend you do with some of yours if you wanna um, sell them or make copies. To get your presets ready for sale, you wanna to go to your desktop computer, you wanna right click on your preset and hit export. It's gonna make an XMP file. You can then take that XMP file and you can make it available through download on PayPal, Patreon, Instagram, whatever your mode is with which you sell things, Gumroad. And then you can put that in a pack of presets that you can tailor for deep skin, light skin, cityscapes, like anything like that, and make them ready for sale. And because you've now tailored them to be more universal, they're much more likely to be successful. There's a thin line between this preset sucks and it's amazing. And you are one step closer to delivering on that. Thanks. Take care.